in verse 5. And the angel answered and said unto the women, hold on, let me stop here. Let me, hey look, I'm telling you this. Okay, there are people that come and let's not just greet them and know them when we see them at church. We should be reaching out to them and befriending them. Okay. Reverend Coker and I can pick a man up and take him to lunch. We can remember their birthday and go by and drop something off. Those things matter to people. Yes, they do. You can do it. Amen. Okay, and we want to encourage you to do those things. Okay, you've got somebody that's a, a friend. Maybe they've been to church. Maybe they haven't. Befriend them. Show them Christ. Okay? Our interaction doesn't have, have to be limited to the time that we have here in a service. Okay, a lot of people are one to God outside of the church service. Okay? We're not, we're just encouraging you, okay? We want to encourage you. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly. And tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. We want to use this this evening with the help of the Lord. We want to preach about the dark before the sunrise. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. We're going to ask his blessing. Upon the service today, Reverend Coker, sir, will you pray, please? Gracious Father, we come before you again in that name that is above all names. We ask you to let a fresh unction rest upon Pastor Pope. Speak to hearts by your word, God, and have your way in this service this evening, Lord. Meet needs and accomplish your eternal purpose. Amen. 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 I remember Amen. Uh, years ago, we were working a uh, at our seminary, at our Bible college up in Washington, and I was helping build buildings and build chapels there and different things. But I was given the opportunity to earn some extra money by pulling guard duty on the weekends. When you got a family, you do what you got to do. That's right. Okay, and when you got a family, you always need more money. Always. Always. Uh, there's, Always need more. You got a okay. wife. <laughs> so anyway, I took the opportunity and, and I would guard around the campus. Uh, it was uh, Friday night and Saturday night. And it was from 11 in the evening to 7 in the morning. And I don't know about you, but there's a certain time of night. I don't care how much coffee that you've, you've had. Your body wants to shut down. And that's about probably 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. It is seemingly the darkest part of the night. And everything in you just wants to go to sleep. Okay? But you hang on. You realize, you know, I got a job to do. I mean, I'll fall asleep. Maybe I'll walk around a little bit, breathe in some of this cool, crisp Washington air. <laughs> okay? And uh, wake up a little bit. But then on the horizon, probably about five in the morning, you begin to see some light appear. Light begins to appear, and you realize the darkness is almost gone. And though in that darkness I was tired, and I just wanted to give up, fall asleep, the sun is coming up. It's the dawning of a new day. And it kind of causes you to wake up and, and be refreshed and then actually starts getting light. And you realize, you know, we're starting a new day. 
and I'm past that now. Well, we can take that and maybe we could liken that to our lives. You know, there are times in our lives when things are dark, isn't there? All of us. We've all experienced things that are dark times in our lives, and sometimes we grow weary and we grow tired, and we just feel like laying down and giving up. I'm just going to lay here and go to sleep. Okay, I'm going to just uh, not look to, to any hope. But thank God there is hope, brother and sister. Yes, it may get dark at times, brother and sister, and sometimes it's the darkest before the sun comes up. But the sun is coming up in the morning. Yes, amen. 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 The Bible phrases it and it tells us this way, brother and sister. You know, tears, tears may endure for the night. But thank God. Joy comes in the morning. Amen? Yeah. There's some joy that we are looking yeah. forward to. Now let's go to our Bible setting. Okay? Go here to our Bible setting. We, we read to you out of Matthew chapter 28 and how the women had come to the tomb. They didn't come there, brother and sister, expecting to find what they found. They came there expecting to find a body that would still be laying there dead. And... Uh, we know that they had previously witnessed, and been especially thinking about Mary, her own son. They had previously witnessed the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't something maybe that we see, like we see in, in portrayed in paintings and and uh, different things, maybe in pictures in the Bible, okay, or paintings in the Bible. They're not really pictures; they're paintings. It was not like somebody was running around with a Kodak camera. Right. I'm dating myself, taking pictures of the Lord. People painted what they thought things looked like, and most of the time it's very sanitary. You know, a little trickle of blood and a little loincloth and just hanging up there with a sad face. But the Bible tells us that his visage was marred more than any man. For real, more than the sons of men, brother and sister. He was absolutely unrecognizable. He hung there. And he died for you and I, and his own mother had to witness this. She sat there, or she stood there and watched what they did to her son, and how that they had crucified him, and she heard him say as he hung there, maybe she didn't understand what he was talking about when he said, it is finished. Maybe she, she thought within herself, well, he's going to die, he's giving up uh, his life, and and he's going to die. And he did. He willingly gave up the ghost. But he wasn't uttering those words, brother and sister, as some sort of defeat, some sort of capitulation, brother and sister. He was letting us know, yes, indeed, it is finished. Yes. Okay? No, his life wasn't finished because he rose from the dead. Right. And he is alive. But the power that the enemy has over you and I, yeah. Yeah. the power of sin, brother and sister, <laughs> The power of death over mankind is finished. Jesus finished it, brother and sister. He won a victory for you and I. He, brother and sister, died on the cross for you and I. Even, even creation itself, brother and sister, darkened. And we know that there was darkness over the face of the earth. And, and creation itself mourned at the death of its king and its creator. But it wasn't over yet, brother and sister. It may have been dark, but, brother and sister, thank God the sun comes up in the morning. Let's go on and look at some other things that led up to this point. We can look at the life of Jesus, and it's even called, part of his life is called by commentators, the year of popularity. His ministry lasted three years. He began his ministry at the age of 30, and he was crucified at 33. There was a year of popularity. People wanted to come and to see and to hear Jesus. Even a week, brother and sister, before the Passover, we know we know that, uh, or prior to the Passover, brother and sister, we know that he triumphantly entered into Jerusalem. Yes, yes. And they laid palm leaves before him as he rode in on a donkey and they cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. How quickly things changed. How quickly they changed. Whether well, Sister he went from being popular and people wanted to see him. People wanted to hear 
him, brother and sister. They wanted to know uh, who he was and what he could do and see his works, but it grew progressive. Things grew progressively worse. Jesus began to teach in John chapter 6, and we can kind of get a glimpse of, of the start of it there. He began to tell people, you don't need to follow me for fishes and loaves. I am the bread of life. Yes. I am the bread of life, and you need to eat of me. You need to partake of me, Jesus began to tell us. He began to let us know that he needs to be the one that sustains you and I. It's more, brother and sister, than blessings. It's more than what God can do for us. Brother and sister, what about what God wants you and I to do? He is the bread of life. Many of them rejected him, and they went away. And Jesus looked at Peter and the others, and he said, Will you go away also? And Peter responded, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Oh. I want more, Lord, than some fish, some loaves. I want you to tell me how I can have this eternal life. Lord, I want you to tell me what I must do to have eternal life. And Peter went on and he said, We believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus went from popularity to being rejected and despised. Have you ever felt that way? Have you felt like you were rejected of people that you loved? Have you ever felt despised of people that you love? Yes. Come on now, Jesus can relate, brother and sister. He was despised. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons and the daughters of Almighty God. Jesus understands, brother and sister. Okay, he, he was betrayed by Judas Iscariot okay, as a friend with a kiss. Peter then would deny him three times before the rooster crowed. He, he was taken and he was falsely accused. And what was seen, what was said about him was not only not true, much of it was made up, brother and sister, People just made stuff up and slandered him, talked about him, ran him down. Can I get a witness? Amen. Okay? But he did not hate in return, brother and sister. He did not hate in return. Even Pilate knew there's something wrong here. They're, they're running him down. They're talking bad about him. I don't find any fault in him. They, he knew it was because of envy, brother and sister. The whole situation he knew that Jesus was innocent and he found no fault in him. They delivered Jesus out of envy and he tried to even give a murderer in the place of Jesus. He tried, brother and sister, to have Jesus released and a, and a murderer to take Jesus' place. But Jesus was rejected and the murderer was set free. Pilate succumbed to the political pressure of the crowd and of Caesar and he delivered Jesus to be crucified. Yes, it was dark, but brother and sister, the sun would come up yes. in the morning. Yes. Jesus yes. experienced a horrible death. As we said, his mother looking upon him, distraught in anguish. We can imagine the anguish that it caused as she watched him being crucified. No one did anything to help. On the contrary, they mocked him. They cursed him. They spit upon him. They wagged their heads at him. He was beat. He was scourged. He was nailed and hung on a cross. He died, brother and sister, after six long hours in an open public shame. But it wasn't over yet. It may have been dark, brother and sister, but the sun is coming up in the morning. Thank God, brother and sister. Here we are on Sunday morning, and she came to the tomb. We read about it this afternoon out of the Gospel of Luke chapter 24. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, certain others with them, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in. Brother and sister, it wasn't some small little stone. It was a very large stone. I've seen uh, pictures of what they believed to be the tomb. 
where they laid the Lord, brother and sister, hewn out of rock, a very large stone that would roll in front of it. It would be sealed up. There's no way that someone from the inside could open that thing, brother and sister. They even put guards there, Roman guards to guard the tomb. It was sealed and seemingly secure. There was no way that anyone was getting out. But, brother and sister, it wasn't just anyone that was in that tomb. Right. It is the Lord himself. It is our Messiah. It is our Savior. It is the Son of Almighty God. Yeah. Brother and sister, he was justified by the Spirit. God shook the earth and the heavens, and he rolled that stone away. Yeah. And Jesus came walking out of the grave. Brother and sister, the sun came up in the morning. Yeah. And there is light now. There is light. They found the stone rolled away. They entered in and found out the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed. There about two men stood by in shining garments. And they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth. And they said unto them, Why seek ye the living above the dead? He is not here. Brother and sister, he's not dead anymore. We don't have to look for the living among the dead. Let's get our eyes off the tomb. And let's get our eyes. He is alive forevermore. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man, saying the Son of Man must be delivered in the hands, delivered in the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. We need to remember the words yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. When it's dark, brother and sister, when it seems like there's no hope. Hope is lost. It's too far gone. How are we going to get out of this situation? Oh, what am I going to do? Let's remember the words of Jesus. Let's remember his words, brother and sister. We go on. And there were two men that were walking on a road to Emmaus. But they constrained him. Jesus came by, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward the evening. The day is far spent. And he went to tarry with them. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. They had been walking with the Lord. They were talking about how Jesus was crucified. They didn't even know it was the Lord. And you know, sometimes, sometimes, brother, sister, we don't even know. We think, well, God's not with me. God's not helping me. He's right there walking with you. He's right by your side. We spot all of our complaints and all of our worries and all of our troubles. And Jesus is right there. And then he begins to remind us of his word. Amen. And we begin to realize, oh my goodness, he's been right here with me the whole time. Yes, yes, yes. Why did I worry? Why did I fret? Why did I doubt? He's never left me. He's never forsaken me. He truly has gone with me always. Always. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. When they began to commune with the Lord. When they began to break bread and to fellowship with him. You know, that's what we need to do. We get in those times in our life. Let's find a nice, quiet place of prayer. And let's break bread with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's kneel down and pray and commune with him and he with us. And just like these men, brother and sister, our hearts can begin to burn in us. God can begin to stir up the gift of the Holy Ghost that we have been given. As the Apostle Paul encouraged Timothy, Timothy was in a battle. All right, Are you here? Amen. He was pastoring this church. All right, now. People were finding fault with him. Come on now. Yes, sir. Paul began to encourage him, brother and sister. Paul began to let him know, hey, stir up that gift of God that is given amen, you amen. by the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Do you remember, Timothy, when we prayed with you and God filled you with the Holy Ghost? God empowered you. You still have that same power in your life. Christian, God filled you with the Holy Ghost. And when he did, he gave you power to be a witness 
for him. Amen. A power in the dark times to be a witness. A power in the dead times to be a witness. Yeah. Whether it's dark, whether it's light, brother and sister, God has given you power yeah. to be a witness for the Lord. Yeah. You have the power within you. You have it, brother and sister, and we can yeah. use it. Their eyes were open, and uh, they were, brother and sister, they said, did not our hearts burn with us when he talked with us by the way and opened unto us the scriptures? We go on into in Luke 24 to the upper room with the disciples. And they asked, and as they spake, let me move that back. I hear some, some ringing going on. Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Oh, God. Oh, Speak those hallelujah. words to my heart. Speak those words to my mind, Jesus. When I'm troubled, God, where I don't know where you are. God, when I'm wondering what's going on, let me hear those words. Peace be unto you. As Reverend exhorted about John on the Isle of Patmos. Oh, God, I'm just trying to do what you want me to do. And they've arrested me. And they sent me out to this island. I've been banished. And I'm out here, God. But oh, one thing, brother and sister, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. He began to pray. And Jesus himself appeared to him and said, fear not. It is I. Amen. 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 He said to them, peace be unto you. But they were terrified and afraid and supposed that he had been a spirit. Then he said unto them, why are you troubled? And why do these thoughts arise in your hearts? Be, behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me. And when he had thus spoken, he showed him his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy, he wondered his, and wondered, he said unto them, Have you any hear, hear any me? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and a honeycomb, and he took it, and he did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and Thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem and ye are witnesses of these things and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high and we know in the book of Acts chapter 2 that God endued them with power but not only them he still poured out the power of the Holy Ghost on his church God fill you with the Holy Ghost He's not taking it away from you. Uh, Brother and sister, the answer to your problem is within you. Amen. Amen. Instead of being afraid, build up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's go on here. And, led them, and he led them out as far as Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven, and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. We can read about this account in the book of Acts. Brother and sister, the Bible tells us there, okay, two angels again appeared and said, Why stand ye gazing? The same way you saw him go is the same way he's coming back. Yes. Oh, they saw him ascend over 2,000 years ago. He went up, brother and sister, but you know one of these days he's coming back for you and I. Yes. Amen. Huh? Yes. They saw him. He got smaller and smaller right. and smaller and he was gone. Amen. I don't know when it's going to happen, church. Maybe it will happen in our lifetime, and what a glorious day it's going to be when we look up and we see him. And he comes, and he gets closer and closer, and then we go up, and we meet him in the air, and we're going to forever be with the Lord. We're going to comfort one another with these words. Yes, I know this world is dark. 
Yes, I know the enemy is raging. He not. He has not won. He will never win. He's already lost. Jesus is victorious. Everything that he said is going to happen. It's going to happen just the way that he said. Yes. One of these days he's coming back. Yes, he and we're going to be him. Yes. And we're going to forever be with the Lord. Yes. Well, Pastor, what if it doesn't happen in my lifetime? Brother, sister, will I show you a mystery? Yes. Are you here? We're not going to all sleep. Now, some of us are. Some of us are going to die before he comes back. Yes. But it doesn't matter either way. Yes. Either way, we're going to be changed yes. in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Yes. Brother and sister, this corruptible is going to put on incorruption. Yes. Woo! Yes. You know what, brother and sister? They're asking me, Arthur's asking me, they're going to do a memorial service of Gloria. I don't know when it's going to be, where they're going to do it, and who's going to be here. Okay, you haven't got the particulars yet. We'll let you know when we know. Okay, but you know what? I guarantee you, I don't know who of us is going to be there, but she's not going to be there. All right. Are you here? She's already in the presence of the Lord. As we shared this afternoon, don't cry, don't fret, don't worry. Brother and sister, one of these days, either by death, or by the rapture of the church, we're going to join that heavenly host. And what a glorious day that is going to be. We have a hope, church. The sun came up. And he's still up. And he's still shining. And he will always shine. No one will ever put that light out. You know, I can go and I can learn in the word of God. There's going to come a time that the sun is going to stop giving its light. That the moon is going to stop reflecting the sunlight of the sun. Yes. But there's another light. And his name is Jesus. And he is going to shine forever. Yes. 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 We're going to come and pray. And she comes to the keyboard. My friend, don't worry. Don't worry. God's in control. God is in he control. loves you. He is the one that saved you. Yes. He'll never leave you or forsake Amen. you. Regardless of how dark it may have seemed, the sun came up. Yes. The sun's As we up. bow our heads, we close our eyes in reverence to the Lord. We come tonight and we pray. You've got the Holy Ghost, my friend. I want to encourage you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Build up your most holy faith tonight. Hallelujah. Let the love of God be shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. Let us come and pray tonight. God bless you as our prayer. Thank you, loving God. Praise you, Lord. We love you. We thank you.